Heart to Heart Catholic Media Ministry and Bellarmine Jesuit Retreat House present an inspiring reflection from the pilgrimage Shrines of Spain, walking in the footsteps of St. Ignatius Loyola and other great saints. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, the angel said, Hail, favored one, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, of his kingdom there will be no end. Of his kingdom there will be no end. Of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, But, but how can this be, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your kinswoman, has also conceived in her old age a son. For nothing is impossible with God. And with that, 
the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Dominic was born in the year 1170, so 12th century. He had a priest uncle whom he greatly admired who tutored him, and he was ordained a priest. Dominic was ordained a priest, diocesan priest. But he traveled with his uncle, as Jesus said, over to France and throughout Italy. And he, became, he came in contact with what was called the Albigensian heresy. And the Albigensians said that there are two principles. There's spirit and there's matter. And spirit is good and matter is bad. And the Albigensians were ascetic. They lived a very poor life. They were celibate. They, and they fasted and they prayed. And so they were, they won the admiration of the local people because they were so obviously holy. Because the spirit is good. And for the Albigensians, you wanted to free yourself from all the constraints of the body. So far, so good, you might say. But they took that to say that the body is bad and we want to free ourselves from the body. And the result was they denied the incarnation. And so they denied the divinity of Jesus. And they denied all of the sacraments. Because the sacraments are physical objects, water, oil, bread, wine, touch. All of those things are to be askewed. What is important is spirit. Spirit, that's where God, that's where God resides. And you want to free yourself from anything. And Jesus was a holy man, but he wasn't really, he wasn't really a man. He was a spirit. And Mary, well, the story of the Annunciation and the Holy Spirit coming to Mary, well, that's nonsense. The Holy Spirit cannot come into human flesh. And because the people that taught that that heresy were so pious and so holy, people believed it, and the Albigensian heresy spread throughout the land like wildfire. Because the normal clergy, they were eating and drinking and they were preaching, but they were living living a, a, a wealthy lifestyle. The clergy were, you know... Father, God bless you. Father, can I, can I buy your lunch for you, Father? How about a little extra ice cream for you, Father? Father, how about if you sit at the, at the front seat in the, in the bus, Father? You know? <laughs> and the Albigensians, they would be in the back of the bus. No gelato for them. You know? <laughs> well, Dominic saw that, and, and he said, this is terrible. This is terrible. And so he taught people to pray the rosary. And it wasn't, the emphasis wasn't just on Mary. The emphasis was on if you deny that Christ was born of a woman, then you deny the humanity of Jesus. And so he placed great emphasis on Mother Mary as a way of tossing the emphasis on Jesus and the humanity of Jesus, that Jesus was like us in all things but sin, that he was fully human and divine. And so Dominic adopted a very poor lifestyle, and he emphasized teaching for his order and preaching, and one of the other methods of praying for Dominic, was walking from place to place to place. He became, they became itinerant preachers that were schooled and scholarly and well-educated, and they were ascetic as a way of co- confronting the Albigensian heresy and teaching people to pray the rosary. 
and it was through devotion. And so to this day, the Dominicans, many Dominicans, will wear a rosary. And that dates from the time of Dominic. And there's a whole tradition of, one of the rosary being entrusted to, into, to the Dominicans as a way of saying Jesus was born into this world and flesh is not and matter is not evil. Now there's a, a wonderful story of Dominic having a vision of Christ looking upon the world and seeing the sinfulness of the world. And then Mother Mary pointing to two people, one of them Dominic and the other one a poor man that was dressed like a beggar. And the next day, according to this tradition, Dominic saw a poor man dressed as a beggar, Francis of Assisi. And he's quoted as saying, you are my companion and must walk with me. If we hold together, no earthly power can withstand us. So rising up in the 13th century, these two powerful religious orders, the Franciscans and the Dominicans. The Franciscans place great emphasis on poverty and humility, but not so much on learning. The Dominicans also on poverty, but on great learning, putting these two traditions together. Let me lead you in a meditation, as I said, in fleshing, now you understand why Dominic put so much emphasis on praying with our bodies because the Albigensians de denied that. One of his meditations is, is a meditation on the cross. It's very simple. You can do this sitting down or you can do this standing up. But your hands have to be free. And Dominic said, just open your hands. Become aware of something that's burdening you. What's the struggle, a physical struggle, an emotional struggle? Something that's burdening you. Just hold that out. Imagine that you're holding that out. And then he taught us to pray, Jesus, I entrust this to you. Just in a voice loud enough for you to hear and perhaps nobody else, but you can hear yourself saying that, Name some burden. You don't have to name the burden out loud. But then just pray, Jesus, I entrust this to you. Now place your hands just so they're out a little bit to the side. And name something else that you're struggling with. Or it could be the same thing. Feel the weight. Maybe you're angry about something. You've been hurt by someone. Maybe you're not feeling well today. Maybe you're worried about your children. You're worried about your job. You're not sure about the future. What's something you're struggling with? Holding your hands out, Dominic taught us to pray, Jesus, I entrust this to you. It's a variation on the prayer, Jesus, I trust in you. For Dominic, he said, Jesus, I entrust this to you. Surrender it, let it go, give it to Jesus. And then a third time, hold your hands out so they're in the form of a cross. You may need to Adjust slightly so you don't hit the person next to you. Stretch out your hands. Where does the cross meet your life? What's the burden you're carrying? Jesus, I entrust this to you. Amen.
to love the gospel of